Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Rex Roo here, and welcome back to yet another game make tutorial, and today we're going to be doing is going over some simple enemy detection, and yes, for those of you who are wondering, I am working in Game Maker Studio. I know I usually don't do so, but I'm working on my laptop today because my desktop is solving problems, so this is the only version of GM that I had installed on here, but nonetheless, this still should, or in fact will work on previous versions of Game Maker, so don't worry about that. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and run the game really quick just to give you guys a little look at what we're going to be doing today um, so you guys will uh, know exactly what we are going to try to accomplish. So, um, as you can see, I have a little player right there and a little enemy that kind of just stays stagnant right there. And if I get close enough to the enemy, whoa, he starts to chase me and we can go out of his range. He'll go right back to where he spawned originally. And um, if you go out of his range and then kind of go right back into his range, he'll start chasing you again instead of just going right back to start. So that's pretty much what we're going to be doing today, and I'll show you guys how to kind of uh, edit the range, you know, of how close you have to be before he starts chasing you, and what he does when he goes back, and all that kind of cool stuff. So, without further ado, let's go and exit out of this, and uh, show you guys what all is going on to make this all work. So, um, as you can see, I have two sprites right here, uh, none of which are really too important. I mean, you just need two basic sprites, a uh, player sprite and enemy sprite. Um, so, and nothing special going on there, just basically two graphics to signal or signify that there actually is a something there. And uh, the ground here is, again, not really special, just there for detail. Um, you don't need it. And uh, we have two objects here of the previously mentioned sprites, both a player object and an enemy object. <coughs> Uh, excuse me, get that out of my throat. Um, and so basically what we have going on here is uh, in the player object, I have just a very, very simple movement. If you already have movement, then this is not needed. Um, I just put basically the simplest movement that I could think of, which is, you know, left keyboard is makes you go left at a speed of three. Uh, same for right. Obviously, it just goes right, though. And no key is, well, you go nothing. Um, everything is basically done in the OBJ enemy object. This is kind of where all the magic happens here. And so what I have is I have an event, just a simple step event here, so regular step and step, and then a execute code action. And in here, let me go and pull this over. There we go, we have a little bit of cutoff here, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, so this is the code, and this is all the code. So there's nothing else besides this. Um, all it is is just if distance to object obj player um, is less than 75, which obviously in this obj player slot, or little box, um, you'd want to put the name of your player. If it's not obj player, if it's like, say, o player or just player, just go and replace the obj player with whatever the heck your player's name is. And um, the distance right here is this little 75 basically signifies how uh, far away you have to be before the enemy starts chasing you. So if you want it to be longer than 75, so basically you go and then, you know, the distance is longer. Um, I guess it'd, it'd almost be like a wider radius, detection radius. You could go like, I don't know, 100, and so the enemy would have more room to see other things. Um, but if you wanted to go shorter, you could change it to like uh, 25. <laughs> um, so that's basically how that works. I'm just going to keep it at 75 for now. Um, now for the move towards point, this is basically making it so it's moving, uh, once the enemy detects you, it's moving towards your player. And so, I mean, pretty self-explanatory right here. Uh, the OBJ player, you want to obviously change if your player's named something different. Uh, the dot X and the dot Y is basically saying that our enemy is moving towards our player at its X coordinate and its Y coordinate. So that's how that works. And this final little two here is just the speed that it's moving at. So it's moving at a speed of two towards your player. And that's that. Now, uh, what we have below here, this little else, basically signifies that when it's not moving towards your player, um, well, I guess this little, that's what this kind of does, this distance thing here, uh, it's basically saying that when it's out of the range or out of the distance from seeing your player, um, it's going to go ahead and just go down to here and move towards point, uh, your X start and the Y start and at a speed of 2. Now, let's say you don't want it to move back to the basically the, the original spawn point. What you would do is change up this X start and Y start to whatever you want. Like let's say you just wanted it to stop moving, right? So actually if you want to do that you could just take this out altogether. Because this basically this move towards is just making it so it moves towards a certain point. Uh, this little speed zero makes sure that it stops and so 
yeah. <laughs> because if you keep this move towards and then also like well, let's say remove this speed zero that would basically mean that it just continuously tries to move towards the point like x start and y start and it just kind of like would fidget around so this is basically there just to stop that so yeah that's pretty much how this works and um there's nothing else to it so that's some simple enemy detection for you guys um just go ahead and place obviously your player and your enemy in the room and you're pretty much good to go just run the game and um, everything should work how it should. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully it helps you. Um, I will put the code in the description uh, just in case you guys want to copy it down, which you guys probably have already checked in the description if you guys are going to work on this tutorial. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much how everything works. And I guess that's the end of the video. So until next time, until next video, this has been Rex Rory. And as always, uh, I guess I'll see you all then.